As I watch the contemporary debate or general discourse between creationism and evolutionary science unfold, not just here on the internet, but in society in general, I'm consistently and continually struck by the question, what is the point of that? What is the point of this discourse? It's clear enough that in all but a very, very few cases, there is no possibility of changing the minds and the thinking of creationists. So a direct debate with them seems to be an entirely pointless exercise. Perhaps we could say that it has some sort of value for third-party observers, who may as yet be somewhat equivocal in their thinking on that issue. But even then, I'm not sure how much value there can be. Because it only takes five minutes in essence, to demonstrate that no discourse is possible and that creationism cannot be spoken of in other than a religious context. Creationism has no relationship to science and no relationship to the methodological dynamic of science, even though at times, in a passing sense, it may indulge in that. And I'll say more about that in a moment. But even before we get to the issue of what creationism is and what science is, we can observe that creationism essentially fails on theological grounds. It fails even before we get to the issue of whether creationism is scientific in any real way, or whether it's capable of any kind of meaningful discourse with evolutionary science. It fails because creation is impossible for a God that is defined in the way that God is normally, in the monotheistic tradition, defined. Specifically, creation is impossible for an infinite God. And by and large, God is defined as being infinite. I'm sure most creationists, if you put that specific question to them, is God infinite, they'd be forced to answer yes, because if they disagree and make God finite, that makes him limited in all sorts of different ways. The reason that creation is impossible for an infinite God ought to be fairly obvious. There's nowhere for God to put a creation. Infinite doesn't just mean no beginning and no end, like a mathematical infinite, like the set of all natural numbers or something like that. Infinite in this sense means unbounded. It means everywhere and every when. Such a God can't create anything. He can't put a creation somewhere because he's already there. The only theological framework within which creationists could put their ideas would be something along the lines of a part of God evolving according to the volition of God. But an infinite God cannot create. So as far as I'm concerned, it's possible to refute creationism on theological grounds only. But let's move on from that and look at creationism's relationship to science and to evolution, and see if there is any whatsoever. One of the first problems that we come up against, which is a problem that's been highlighted by numerous people even here on YouTube, is that creationists have a very hard time in faithfully representing what they oppose. In other words, they have a very hard time in faithfully representing what evolution is. And if they have a hard time with that, they're going to have an equally hard time faithfully representing what evolutionary science does. And I don't need to go into the details of that, because we all know what is meant by that. Evolution has got nothing to do with the origins of life and the origins of the solar system and the origins of the universe, etc. What I think we can say about science and creationism is that they pretty much start out on the same page. They both begin with observation of the world and inferences drawn from those observations which build to a working hypothesis. Of course, in the case of creationism, the hypothesis is conveniently laid out in a book, but that's where any relationship between the two things ends. The quintessential difference between creationism and the reason why it can never be accepted by rational people as anything resembling a a form of science is that whilst a scientist may modify his working hypotheses every 10 minutes if experimentation and testing demands that he do so, creationism cannot 
The hypotheses of science are not the basis of a belief system. They do not make truth claims for themselves. The opposite is true with creationism. The working hypotheses of creationism do constitute a belief system about which creationists make truth claims. It doesn't matter what creationists do, what they find, what they discover, what their quasi-reasoning tells them. If it conflicts with their working hypotheses, they must abandon it, because their hypotheses do not admit to modification, and cannot admit to modification. And yet that admitting to modification is one of the very pillars of scientific methodology. Therefore, creationism is not, cannot be, related to science. The difference between creationism and science is a little bit like the difference between theology and philosophy. When Thomas Aquinas constructed his five proofs for the existence of God, he employed philosophic methods, which he ripped off from the Greeks. But he wasn't doing philosophy. He was doing theology. He used a method to build a case for what he already believed. He had a preconceived notion of what was true, Not a working hypothesis, but a preconceived notion of what was true. Philosophy is, in a sense, a scientific endeavour. A science of the mind. It begins with observations, hypothesis, testing, etc. So given the stark difference in the nature of the scientific method and what creationism presents to us, which is quintessentially a religious dynamic, a religious endeavour, a religious reality from beginning to end, I fail to see what possible debate or discourse there could ever be between creationists and evolutionists, or even those who uphold the value of rationality itself. So if you can explain to me what possible value there could be in any such discourse, I'd be very happy to hear it. Thanks for listening, and bye for now from Men of the Infinite.